Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing. Welcome back to the train room for a really cool tutorial video today. So here we go everyone, all aboard. All right guys, so for today's tutorial video, we'll be wiring up these beautiful MTH Rail King Crossing lamps. Got the two track sign there, Railroad Crossing, Nick's Crossing, ready to roll. So these are purchased on eBay, comes in a pack of two. The other one is already set up on the platform, but it's not wired up yet. And you also get a sound module in this little speaker. So there is no additional like circuit card, anything like that. You just wire this in the chain with the lights and the little sound module. Now everything works around, uh, I believe 14 to 18 volts, give or take. We're gonna be running these at 14 volts to help uh, prolong the LEDs or whatnot and the electronics just in case. And to power up these signals, we'll be using a Lionel 153IR system from Hennings Trains that I purchased this weekend. Awesome shop, guys. Definitely check them out up in Lansdale, Pennsylvania. So we have the new and improved, as they called it, 153IR. So it's pretty cool. These work on proximity. So when your train is near that structure, your item will go off or accessory. And I actually have two different versions of these 153IRs. Now, at first, I wanted to use my Z stuff for trains. I had two of these I could wire in a, in a series. But... These can pull up to one amp, so it's really meant to activate a relay, not so much to activate the accessory itself. Compared to these, have the relay and the module built in, and these can handle a ton of power. I used to crank about 18 volts into these for my old accessories, but I don't do that anymore. Everything is 14 volts AC. That's all I need. I don't want to burn out lights. So guys, we're going to go track side. I'll show you how this thing is going to hook up. All right, guys, so I did some uh, pre-construction work. So I cut out the shape of the base and drilled a hole through the platform so you can feed our wires through. And I cut out the base so that this part right here is slightly countersunken into the platform because we have about, I believe, a half inch of foam right here. So that will kind of hide the base so we can just put some scenery flocking or ballast in there to uh, mask all of this stuff underneath. So we're going to feed our wiring through. And the wire that I used to extend the leads on here, I believe this is all Atlas wire. It's soldered and heat shrinked to prevent any type of shorts or anything like that. So we're gonna feed that through here, through the platform. And we're just gonna pull on these carefully. Oh, there we go. And this should fit right into place, kind of like a snug fit. That's nice and snug in there. And then when we're ready, we can actually place scenery material to cover up all this white, you know, broken foam space. So now we have our two leads right here sticking out from the platform. So now we're going to open up the IR, which is in this really cool box, and get that set up on the tracks. I'll go through how to wire that up in a second. All right, guys, so here is the 153 IR. I have the back all opened up. Here's the front side. And this is the, quote, new and improved version. Uh, it has the fast track, you know, track power connectors here. We're going to end up cutting these off, finding a way on the inside to get rid of these. These are nothing but a hassle. Um, but right here, this is for your track power for uh, tubular track, old school track. But they don't even give you the track clip anymore, it seems. So you're kind of just stuck with these wires. But the old ones used to come with a socket that would pop in here. And you screw it in right here. But this one doesn't have it. Uh, on the back side, the business end, we're going to have this set. And here is your power, ground. And then over here you have AC power, AC ground, ground normally open, ground normally closed. So normally open means something's going to go by here. It's going to close the circuit. Normally closed means that your circuit's running and then something goes by here, it's going to turn it off. So we're going to want normally open. Because if the circuit's open, we're not getting power until train goes by, closes the circuit, gates go off. And we have fine-tuned controls right here. We have sensitivity and time. Uh, we'll have to play with these once the circuit's opened up and once we're in the testing phase. So let's get this hooked up. I already have uh, two wires coming off my power brick of 14 volts AC to hook right into this device. All right, guys, we are track side again. And before I set this IR in place, We'll do some testing. So I have some cars here on my track and let me switch this the right direction. I want to make sure that this IR is not going to hit my trains. Normally I'd like the IR to be on the inside of the track. So it's lesser of a chance for a scale car or something like that to hit. But 
I want to see the decals on the outside. And if it is a problem, I can actually just move this the other side of the track. So got some big cars here. Well, I got this little cement car first. And we have this beautiful scale B&O car. And you want to tune this in right about there. That should be a fair enough distance. And I also don't want to cut into my ballast or any of the switch controls on the switch. So we're going to wire this up for about right here. All right, guys, we are ready to wire up the IR. So I've got my two lines here. These are my hot wires that are coming out of a um, auxiliary power on an MRC dual, which is a great transformer. Uh, it's my conventional backup. It also has a circuit breaker on every line. So it has two outs for your track and also an accessory. All of them are protected by separate circuit breakers. So to do this, we're actually going to first take the green wire and put that into the ground. And these little tabs, I know it's kind of hard to see, these spring back, put the wire in the socket and push, then that tab locks in the wire. So that's it. That easy. These little orange tabs are what you want to pull back. Next, we have the hot side. Make sure that's nice and clean right here. Put that into the power side. Push that back. So right now we have power. This thing is energized. And now that this is all wired up, you're going to hear a click when we're working on it. So here we go. So that clicking sound is a relay that's tripping because the circuit in here is wired up correctly. All right, so here are our grouped wires for the ground side. So we want to go into normally open on the ground side, which is right here. All right, so that's in. And there you go. So normally open is all wired up. Now we need to take our red wires here will be our power wires. These need to go into the AC side, not the AC ground, to apply power. And our lights should be working. And there we have it. Our lights are on. They look great. And they cut off just in time. So let me just roughly place this right here. We have a car or a train coming by. There we go. That looks amazing. <laughs> I love it. And I actually kind of like the time of that, but you have to time it out. So if you have a car, um, let's see how long it takes for it to shut off. Because I want to have the crossing on once the train is, you know, a little bit past the crossing here. So let's move this little tender. All right, let's see what happens. All right, it's off. Now it's on. Should still be on. There we go. And the train passes the sensor. And there you go. That's actually not too bad. I'll set the duration a little bit higher, but it shouldn't be too bad. So next, guys, we're going to wire up the sound unit, which is right here. Little, little speaker. And it should be pretty easy. I'm just going to uh, quickly put these in to each of the other sockets. And then we'll get to testing this with a train, of course. All right, guys, ready for the grand reveal. So here we go. Check this out. And I love this crossing. And, um, yeah, I even did all the scenery for you guys. This is all just flocking material, and uh, I call it green, fuzzy, expensive stuff from Woodland Scenic. And I actually had to move the sensor over. It was just too soon being right here. Now, underneath the uh, actual crossing signal posts, this is all drying. But once it's dry, it will look just like the ballast on my track. Same with over there. I have a soupy mess. Um, I had to use a little bit of glue and water mixed and it's actually just rising up because it's drying. Um, this looks a lot better over here, but I did hide the base of those. I always like having stuff counter sunk in, just like how the uh, IR sensor right here is kind of sunk in, nice and flush with the uh, platform. And if you need to access anything, there's enough room you can actually pop all this little uh, foam flocking material out to access the wires, and you can just lift this whole thing up to access it. So it's not like a permanent thing. Uh, these crossing signals here, yeah, if you had to access them, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but you really don't need to unless they're dead and you have to replace them. But anyways, guys, I think it's time to test a train. So uh, I got a really cool train on the tracks for you guys. So sit back, relax, all aboard. <laughs>
All right, everyone, that's going to conclude this video on how I wired up these beautiful MTH Rail King level crossing signals. And they are really cool. They actually have a bunch of other different signals that uh, they came out with. They actually have a, an L crossing or a bridge crossing that um, goes over the roadway with the lights as well. And they also have um, IR kits that plug right into rail tracks. They're getting harder to find, but they also have a couple of other IR circuits. They went and did like a uh, post-war style crossing and a pre-war style crossing that are really cool as well. But this is a great kit for the price I paid. Two lights and the speaker, you can't beat it, honestly. And the IR sensor is working great. Uh, a couple things about it though, if you're running darker rolling stock, or like a Tuscan brown color, it may not trip every time. And my theory behind it is that the light, the infrared, because it's a red spectrum of light, it's being absorbed in that darker color and not bouncing back and going to the sensor to activate. So, uh, for example, my Weaver merchandise cars or the no damage cars we're running for the test run, those would actually make the sensor cut out. So a trip on the Penn Central car, three, Box cars later, it would be dead. Then I trip again on the Conrail caboose. So what you do in that case, you play around with the time on the sensor itself. There's a duration, which is your your distance and time, how long it's activated for, and then the sensitivity. And I got it dialed in pretty well. Right, right now, it's a little bit longer than what it was, but let's see. So it's, it's pretty long, and it's actually perfect for... What I run, because I run a lot of Pensy stuff and darker engines like post-war stuff. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing. Make sure to hit that bell for all notifications so you don't miss rail fan content, layout updates, and content just like this. Giving one of these really helps out the video, and I love reading your guys' comments, so type it up. I love to read it. But anyways, everyone, until next time, happy railroading. See ya.